Okay, so the Army taught me about leadership, purpose, direction, and motivation. That those are the three things that the Army defines leadership as, purpose, direction, motivation. Purpose is your dream. I'm going to give you direction, okay? Motivation comes from you, the values, and the people you surround yourself with. And if, it, and if you're not doing what you want to do in life, it's because your values are misaligned, you don't have the right people on board, okay? And I'm going to show you that system. Um, absolutely love the Army. There's a slogan called Army Strong. And it, it's defined as having immense physical, mental, and moral strength to make a difference that matters. At the end, I'm going to go run you through an exercise where you will self-identify yourself. Self-identify, that's your brand, sort of, what you think it is. And then what you think other people think of you, and that's your global identity. Generally, there, there's a disconnect or a mismatch there. I'm going to show you how to rebrand yourself because I'm going through that right now. Okay, and I'm, going to, I'm not only going to tell you, I'm going to show you using own personal examples. So this is very different for me. You're going to see a lot of personal stuff about me, which I normally don't share. I normally don't tell a whole lot of military stories. I have three videos. Um, one's a bad accident. Values were misaligned for that aircraft and that crew. Uh, another one is a HUA killer video, okay, an aircraft doing incredible stuff the right way. And then I'm also going to show you a video which culminates um, and, and significant, uh, symbolizes the training that I went through as an Apache helicopter pilot. People are going to die in the video, okay? So I just want to make sure you know that. If it's a little emotional, I'll tell you that this is a video where people will die. Just so you know, and if you need to get up and walk out, that's okay. I, I don't mind that. Um, this is non-attributional. So I may say some stuff, because I'm still in the Army, by the way. I'm a colonel, and there's some things um, that can't leave this room, okay? If you ask questions at the end, I'm going to be very honest, and we call it non-attribution. So you don't attach that to me. In other words, don't tag what I said back to me, okay? This is all about accelerating to your dreams. The Army taught me how to think, not what to think, but how to think. I'm going to teach you today how to accelerate to your dream, whatever that is, with this system. And I know it works because I did it 22 years ago to become an Apache helicopter pilot, and I'm doing it now as I transition, finding my new role and my new passion in life, similar to what you're doing now. Okay, so we're going to come back to that slide. So I'm going to give you some parting wisdom at the very front of this. If you remember nothing, I want you to remember the next few slides, okay? I'm going to tell you a couple questions to ask, what I think is important, and then I'm also going to share with you some personal stuff. Key questions asked. What, so what, now what? The Army taught me a, a problem-solving method. It's called the military decision-making process. It's a long process. You look at a bunch of alternatives. You weigh them, compare, contrast, and then you select the best one. Then there's another method called the, uh, basically, military decision-making process in the abbreviated form. You skip a few steps, but you still get the same end state. Then there's something called a prime recognition decision model. That after you've done something for a while, you don't need to go through a long process. Everyone calls it, well, that's what my gut told me to do. No, your brain told you that, okay? Your brain is the best computer. You've heard that. It's a super-duper computer. It's like infinity times infinity. No computer could ever do that man-made, but your brain can. And so your brain recognizes patterns, and it's already starting to solve something, but you go, well, I kind of think I should go there. When you start to get that gut feeling, go. The Nike commercial, just do it, go, do it, okay? There's another model that's much simpler. What, so what, now what? I'll solve any problem with, the, with those three questions. Something happens, that's the what, it's a fact. Fact is irrefutable. I'm wearing, you know, slacks. That's irrefutable. The so what is the value you put to that information, and then the now what is, what are you going to do about it? Most of us get the what. It's easy to say blank happened. Most of us sort of understand how to put value to something based upon our own values. I'm going to show you how to do that through a different value set, especially in an organization. The thing that's really tough, especially for young soldiers and young officers, is the now what. What do you do now? 
But we get so conditioned to this. What, so what, now what? We always have a great plan going in, but once, once you attack the enemy, all plans are off, and you shift from there. If you watch football, it's called an audible. We audible everything. And so with a few key words, I know where I want to go. I know the path. I may not exactly follow it, but I know that direction. The path is going to change your life. The direction, your purpose shouldn't, okay? What if, then what? I think we heard that yesterday. What if, well, if that happens, then what? What if, Mitch, you, you get to do this big dream gathering at the convention center? Holy crap, then what? You have to be prepared for those questions. What if, then what? Why, why, why? Uh, a couple years ago, I, I had the fortunate opportunity to be the personal aide to a four-star general. There's only 12 of those in the Army, and I got chosen to be his aide. Now, this is odd, because I'd met him in Afghanistan. He helped get funding for the task force that I commanded there, 43 aircraft, almost 750 people of fixed wing and unmanned systems. And when he came to visit, I said, so I have four slides for you. I'm going to tell you who we are, what we do, and what I need to do what I do better. And he looked at me and said, four slides? Okay. I had four slides. I took about 10 minutes, and then I exposed him to my soldiers, let them tell the story, because they're the face and voice of, of my organization. If you can trust the most junior person, not lower, but the most junior person to tell their story about the organization, well, that's a lot of trust there. He remembered that. So I get a phone call, hey, you need to call General Thurman. Why? I, I don't know the guy. No, you briefed him. Evidently, he knows you. He wants you to be his aide. I said, well, I, I don't want to be his aide, you know. I'm having fun in Afghanistan. I'm, I'm flying Apache helicopters in combat, and I'm commanding fixed wing and unmanned systems. And I'm kicking the insurgents' ass. I was loving it. We took out the middle, middle people uh, of al-Qaeda, of the Taliban, and, and, and we were really good. My task force was very good multi-intelligence platform, we did a lot. Imagery, signals, electronic communication intelligence, one platform. And if I said the enemy's going to be there, people actioned off what, what we did. So I go in to, to meet him, because I was told to do it, Roger out. And uh, we sat down, and the first question he said was, why do you want to be my aide? And I said, I, I don't. <laughs> He said, what? I said, sir, no, respect, you know, no disrespect, you're a great guy, but I love what I do right now. He said, okay, uh, what if I picked you? I said, well, it's like a, <laughs> I always had a choice going to church when I was a kid. My dad said, you have a choice. You can go to church and like it, or you can go to church and not like it. <laughs> I would say, that's not a choice. He goes, get your ass off the couch, you're going to church. You know, and there were days like, I'm, I'm not going to like this you know, but, it, but it's all in the attitude, and so when he asked that question, I told, told him that story, he laughed, and he goes, so? I said, if you pick me, I'm all in. Okay, and then we talked, he used to be an Apache pilot, so we talked that. This was on Friday, and I happened to be on, on uh, r and with my older brother in uh, D.C. We're going to see the Cherry Blossom Festival during that time of year, and I wanted to go to the big Catholic cathedral there to see Mass, because we'd never done that. This was on Friday. Uh, on Monday morning, I get a phone call at about 8.30. I, I may have been a little bit hungover. Because <laughs> a bunch of friends in D.C., we go out, and the, the, basically the person on the phone said, is this Colonel Hank? And I said, yes, yes, ma'am. Stand by for General Thurman. <clears throat> you know, I'm going to my throat. And he said, John, what are you doing? So um, I'm uh, talking to you. you know? He goes, you still want to be my aide? I said, sir, I don't think you listen well. No. And he goes, well, you're it. I said, that's how it happens? So what I learned from him, questions, why, why, why? I would watch when he interacted with people, someone would brief him, and he would say, why? He challenged the assumption. Assumption has to be valid and necessary. Why? And so they would answer, and you go, why? And you normally ask three whys. Now, General officers and two-year-olds ask those questions. Two-year-olds, because they don't know any better. No one's conditioned them not to be curious. They just, why? Why is the sky blue? Why? Why? And I was going through this with my, my twin brother's kid, and I went, that's really interesting. 
Those questions are the most powerful ones you're ever going to, to uh, see in life. Okay. Four things to be happy. Something to be, something to do, something to love, something to look forward to. That's pretty simple. Here's what matters to me. People in relationships. My friends I've had for life, my family down there, and two dogs. Clients don't drive what I do now. They just don't. I had senior officers that used to, but now I have the freedom to do what I want. And Adam talks about that quite often, the, the, the freedoms you need in life. Financial, time, relationship, and then service. I like propelling others. I, I just, I like doing that. I like, and this, I want to make sure you understand this. It's not helping you. I'm not helping because that's a different connotation. Okay, if you ever talk to any type of minority group, and I got schooled on this in Minneapolis when I commanded a recruiting battalion. I wanted to partner with the, the folks who run the uh, Chicano Latino uh, Council. And he said, I want to help you. And he said, we don't need your pity. <laughs> I didn't know what he was talking about. And he goes, listen, if you want to propel us to, to our kids' potential, I'm all in. But if you want to help us, we don't need your pity. So I've changed how I talk about that. Um, positive, innovative, and curious. I ask those same questions. Smart work ethic, smart. It's not just good enough to work hard. I want you to work smart. Six, I am driven not by not failing, but I have an overabiding will to succeed. If you did the uh, yoga insanity with me, who, who did that? There were two competitors that, I mean, right next to me, like, these guys are not going to beat me. Yeah, he's in the back, OK? Character, trust, and integrity. This is non-negotiable. You violate trust and integrity with me, you don't get a second chance. I don't care who you are. It is really tough for me to give you, because I can't trust you anymore. And in my business, if I can't trust you, the consequences are dire. People could die or not live. And the last one, listen, write, read, listen. You got two ears, two eyes, one mouth. Think twice before speaking once. Listen to really what someone's trying to tell you. And it's not just the hearing it, it's also seeing and kind of, last night you kind of got that I, as the speaker was talking about a vibe. You can pick up those, those clues. Okay. So what I want you to do now is turn to, to any other person and I want you to share two things about yourself that most people have never heard. So go and do that right now. My dream, I'm going to talk about how I got to my dream and how you can get to yours. That's a new picture of me bright, smiley, you saw me looking like that on Friday. Here's what's going to determine your character. Your character is determined by these three things and your destination in life. The values you inculcate. Inculcate means repeated persistence or persistence repetition every day. If you want to really believe in something, say it every day. When you get up, say it when you go to bed every day. The people in life you take, the, in, that you take, not that are just in your life, but people in life that you take, and then the decisions you make. So let me show you how I did this. I was not the strapping person you saw in the previous picture. That's me in 1986. I still had that dream. I'm on the left side there flying with a great friend, CW4 Bill Gunnett, who we flew together when I was a young lieutenant and he was a young warrant officer. And I got to go on his last flight in Korea. What's very typical is on his last flight, there's a fire truck there and after we land, he has to get out of the aircraft and then he gets sprayed by the fire truck. Um, he ended up pulling me out of the aircraft to make sure I got sprayed too, so that was kind of cool. Uh, this is what I'm transitioning to, the owner of Strength and Honor Solutions. And I've changed the tagline a few times. Right now, it's the art and science of propelling people and organizations, because that, that's at the heart of, of what I really love to do. These are all my clients right now, none of which have paid me <laughs> yet. But the, the bottom three, Academic Decathlon, Bishop McCann, and Harris Construction, we're all in negotiation right now, so we'll see what happens. I've done about 253 keynote speeches, seminars, training sessions over the last 25 years. By no means am I polished. I'm not perfect. I continuously practice this, this art, this craft. 
Here are some other taglines. Oh, let me go back. So celebrity headliners, where star power goes to connect. A bottle of red wine, the lady who owns the organization, we, we built that for her. Herbis Life Grid Technology, ready before you need it. An all-in-one package that makes a difference in humanitarian operations or when a disaster happens. It provides life support, power, um, communication, uh, uh, water purification, and a whole host of other things, and it's ready before you need it. What do you need? In a, in a, in a life-saving situation, that technology is ready, and it, you don't need it yet, but it's ready right now. Briefing that to a bunch of people, that was very compelling for them. Because generally, there's a lag time. Something bad happens, and you've got to wait and wait to get that technology there. You should be familiar with this one, where A-listers come to accelerate. Adam and I did that. We're going to talk about what you just said, much better than the one I came up with, because that's sort of a defeating, that's giving power away. We're going to talk about that at the end, okay, how, how to have positiveness. Because if you tell yourself, I have a chip on my shoulder, I have a chip on my shoulder, you begin, I have a chip on my shoulder, and you seek out other people who have chips on their shoulders. If you say blank, okay, if you feel it, think it, live it, act it, do it, behave, you start to get that mantra in your head, okay? The last one, Eric had to leave, but Silver Shutter Production. Shutter. Silver, he just liked that, the idea of value. So we use the word valuable. Shutter, click, click, click. There's sort of a cadence, valuable stories told right on time. So the taglines are developed once you explain your organization, your customer base, and their needs, and the, what you're providing to them. The tagline speaks for itself from there on out. The biggest famous one in my mind, just do it, Nike. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to walk you through this. Take out a sheet of paper and one on the where it has blue bold lettering. Put your name on the upper left. Put your dream on the upper right. And on the left side, I want you to write down the values, things you hold dear. What are your values that drive you? And then who are the people in your life right now? And take about three minutes to do that. I'm going to spend a lot of time on this slide, okay? You're going to get this, so you don't need to write all this down. You have four sets of values. You can read up there what they are. Cultural and environmental. This is the stuff defined not by you, but by others in your life. Your parents, your culture. Stuff you grew up with that's so embedded in you. Okay, that generations have gone through, especially if, if like me, a Catholic. I mean, it's, it's ingrained upon you from a young age and all that. Those normally don't change, normally. It's not impossible to change those values, but it's, it's close to improbable, okay? So there, there's, there's a probability there that you can. Generally, they don't. The personal values are defined by you. You choose those. They are yours. And as you grow away from your close parents, you begin to take on your own identity. You begin to choose, I'm going to live by this set of values. Then you, you normally join an organization. It's your occupation, your profession, your job. They have a set of values that's clearly defined, right? The top one is the aspirational. You aspire to, to be like that, like Buddha maybe, okay, if you want to use that example. Or it's what you want to really do in life to match your dreams. They may, they may be more than values, okay, but I've kind of put that in that category. Now, the four types of people in your life. I call these the Hink hierarchy of values because I haven't found it anywhere. But I've got to give credit to the people in your life called The Power of People by Dr. Verna Price. I want to make sure. Dr. Verna Price, The Power of People. I want to make sure she knows I gave her credit for that. And, and once you understand this system, it affects the decisions you make. It changes your life. Now, let's go. To subtractors, adders, and I'm going to come back to dividers and multipliers. So this is very simple, right? A little bit. It, the words have symbols. People that subtract, they take away your value. Okay, that's something just a day, a penny a day, a buck a day, but it chips away at who you are. They're not on your bus singing your fight song. They're occupying your bus. They have a seat on your bus. They're weighing you down. If you've ever read from Good to Great, the first rule of, of going to greatness is get the wrong people 
off your bus. Most organizations want to fight to get the right people on, but there's still that anchor. You've got to get that, that anchor off your team. Adders, they increase your value. Everyone in this room is an adder to you, potentially. You choose these people that are in your life. They not only give you value, they give you power. Dividers, they, they know what they're doing in your life. Subtractors may not be. They just, they may be ignorant, they just may not know. Dividers know exactly what you apart. They want to tear your family apart, your job apart, you apart, for whatever reason. And normally it's a selfish reason, because they take your power away. They want that, okay? Multipliers. You will only have a handful of multipliers in your life. Where an adder might put you on an escalator, <coughs> The multipliers in your life put you on an elevator, but only when you're ready and when they can trust you because their reputation, their life is at stake, their power is at stake. But when they're willing to take that step and invest in you, man, just, it is incredibly, incredibly satisfying. Okay? You'll have a few in your life. You won't know. They'll be kind of poking and prod and see who you are and what you're all about. But when you're ready and they step forward, you get shot. And you, you better be ready. And it's not luck. Luck is defined when skill and opportunity meet. You have, they've identified the skill in you, and now they're going to give you that opportunity. So let me show you an example. My name, my dream, I'm going to come back to my decisions, okay? On the left, you see my, my values, cultural and environmental. The Hink family, military tradition, Chinese mix. My grandmother was from Shanghai. Her mom was Chinese. Her dad is Scottish. There were POWs in World War II because she couldn't live in, the Philipp in the, uh, uh, China, in Shanghai, so she went to live with friends in the Philippines. Met my grandfather, who is a military... Guy retiring, they love the islands, beautiful house. They were there at the wrong time. The Japanese invaded, they were interned for three years. So whenever I hear someone say I'm having a bad day, man, I just, you know what bad day is when you have no freedom. When everything new is gone in your life, okay, when they came here, it's empowering. You know, they started with nothing. and I mean, they all did incredibly well. For what my grandmother did, she fought the government to get money. Her, her husband died during war, so it was tough to get that death certificate. The government said, we can't pay you the benefit. She fought the government. There's a bill in Congress called the Hink Bill, named after Dorothy Hink, my grandmother. Um, that's, that's persistence, and it was daily persistence. But I grew up with this, and you see the Catholic virtues down there, my personal values. If you know masonry or the Masonic family, I grew up at, at very young in, in the, the world of Dimalay. It's a Masonic youth group that teaches leadership and service. Organization values, aspiration values, and you see the people in my life. You've got people in your life that's going to propel you okay, to get to that, but your decisions you make, these are my decisions. I sat down and went through this. No, I was doing this formula back then, but these are my decisions that I had to make on my path to become a Apache helicopter pilot. My, uh, my college did not have an, uh, any type of aviation aerospace management degree. But I found someone, a graduate advisor, said, hey, but we, we have a special major program. We can create one for you. Because when the board met to determine my fate in the Army, everything about me I wanted, my brand was, he's already an aviator. Private pilot license, aviation ground school, reserve aviation unit, aerospace management degree, a great score in the aptitude test, graduate at the top of my class. That drove me to be Apache helicopter pilot. But guess what? I got to flight school. They didn't choose me. I went to a scout track, aero scout. I was crushed. I'm only going to send the Army two or three, four years now. But I said, you know, it's all in your attitude. I said, I'm going to be the best scout pilot I can be. And when the opportunity arises, I'm going to have, that, I'm going to have the skill. Now, it took four years, but, but I kept at it, okay? And it was determination, because there were times when these other guys who I didn't think were as good as me are flying this aircraft, and sometimes, you know, they're chosen for the right reason. So you've got to stick with it. 
Here is owner of strength and honor solutions. My values, they changed over time. My seven families, I didn't know the 7777 just worked. Now I, I add my family of six of a succeed past ray list. You're not part of the family. And then you can see what I need to, who the people I need in my life matters. You know most of them. And this is my plan. Okay? If you have subtractors in your life, it might be your mama. Get your mom off your team. I'm just telling you. And it's hard to do. Maybe your boyfriend, girlfriend. Get them, off, get them off your bus. They're weighing you down. Most of the times, the, the friends we take are the people who had similar likes. Or they were like us. But you, you graduate from that group. But sometimes we want to hold on to those ties. If you want to achieve your dream, you want to accelerate, you've got to get the right people on board. Now, they can still be your friend. They can still add to your life. But they may not be adding to your dream. You've got to really understand that and have that heart to heart with yourself. Your values, your people, your decisions help you achieve your dream. There's more, but I'm going to pause right now. What questions do you have? Yes. Um, you know, I just, I always wanted to be in uniform. I, uh, if I, let me go back and you'll see. So, Red Badge of Courage, Chicken Hawk, Once an Eagle, Art of War, Tom Clancy, Pat MacArthur, and Top Gun, all that, I didn't know at the time, but I'm, yeah, I want to really, I thought, man, Tom Cruise, Navy, pilot, awesome. <laughs> to the Navy, and they said, you're going to have to wait, like, two years. The Army said, hey, we can do that for you sooner. And I really kind of wanted to join the Army. I just thought flying fast was cool, you know? So, but, you know, hey. My path was sort of already chosen based upon the values that I held at the time. I love the idea of serving others. I love the idea of, of being good enough to protect the person on my left and right. We don't fight for mom, apple pie, and all that stuff. But you may not know, less than one half of 1% of our nation has any, any understanding of the military. I don't mean understanding. Any connection. So most of you, if you know someone or you're in... Okay, that, that's a connection to the military. Less than one half of 1% of our nation has no connection. They know about the military, okay, but, but they, they don't serve. That's different than World War II when about 12 to 15% of our nation was involved, millions. So, yeah, so does that answer your question? Okay, all right, good. Yes. Uh, jumping out of a plane. I don't like heights. That, I know, that's <laughs> odd. But standing on the edge of a building, and you're not afraid of, of it's really, it's the falling aspect. that I was terrified. And so um, I got, I mean, a, a slot came open to airborne school, and someone said, hey, you're going. Holy, now I'm not going to tell anyone that I'm scared. You know, you just don't do that. <laughs> you just don't. Because once they find out, they'd pick apart your weakness, okay? But, um, I mean, I did it. I trained, I went through it. But here's, I didn't jump the first time. So I am, so if you can imagine, here's the aircraft, and, and you get counted off in a chalk, and you know, holy shit, if you're this number or that number, I think it went in eights. So if you're one, nine, keep going in eights, you have to stand in the door. What that means is you walk up to the door, and you're standing there with your hands on the edge of the door, and I... So I'm like, shit, I'm number nine. And uh, so I know. So going up, I'm just standing in the door. Now I'm shaking. And I try not to look down, but oh, I look down. And I was like, shit. And so the jump master hits you on your ass because that's where a lot of feelings are. And so he hits me on my butt, and I don't, I don't move. So I feel this. He kicked me out. And on the back of our helmet, we have a number. And so he identified Alpha 314. That was my number. I mean, you don't even have the name in Airborne School. Alpha 314. Yes, you know, yes, sir. You're going to stand in the door every jump from here on out. So four more jumps, I had to stand in the door. And he, I mean, he got me over it. But here's the deal. Once you jump out, I mean, the, the fear, and fear is gone because the training takes over. I can still do it today. You look up, make sure the parachute's good, and then you just kind of watch. And for about 30 seconds, it's bliss. Am I, am I right or right? 
Now, he did the better way. He got to skydive with professionals. And so they're on his back because he's, he's strapped in with them, you know, and he's flying down. I mean, that's incredible feeling. And it's going by really fast. It wasn't that fast for me because as soon as I jump out, the ripcord's pulled. So sometimes it's just you get put in that situation and you just do it. The decisions you make, you may not know all of those. Just do it. Go, go do it. Okay? So next question. Not until I met Dr. Verna Price. And we sat down and she said, you need my help. I thought, this crazy black woman, what are you talking about? <laughs> and we sat and talked and she said, you're being held back. You have dividers and subtractors in your life. And when I started to make that assessment, she was right. And, and once you start putting this framework together, you start to see that in other people. What's holding them back? Your values are misaligned, okay? They're not right. You've got to align them. And not necessarily you have the wrong people on board. Get them off because you've got to make room for the right ones who are going to add and multiply you. So does that answer your question? Okay. So, I mean, once you start looking at it, you make those assessments. Are they helping or hurting? Okay, yeah. Um. And that's just, that's just, that's a tough one right now. That's a good question. Um, so those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm gay. And uh, I made some decisions based upon the person I've been with for 11 years. And stuff's not working out. And it just may be time to let loose. But it's, it's hard. I can tell you to do it. I can see it. But boy, doing that myself, that's really hard. So there's some stuff we got to work through. So... And, but, but, you know, it may not be, maybe we just have to repair some stuff and then we can move on, okay? But get, one way, if you're not sure that that person is really subtracting, get, get out of the situation, okay? I'll tell you, and we're going to go, dividers, drinking, I'm going to go through if we have time, maybe later today, I'll do a self-identity and global identity, and how people see you oftentimes is not how you see yourself. And someone identified me as a drinker. What? That's a close personal friend. Why would you say that? Well, you go out and have a good time and party. Yeah, but you go, well, sometimes you get smashed. Yeah. So, boy, that changed my behavior. Sometimes you've got to remove yourself from the situation, and the, those dividers move away. Because now they don't have the opportunity to divide you, okay, or subtract from you. Yeah. Oh, you, you, you see dividers coming. Once you, okay, listen, if, if you're doing drugs right now, that's a divider. Get them out of your life. If that person is constantly feeding negative thoughts to you, they're a divider. Get them out of your life. And so if you look in relationships and in your business, those are where the biggest dividers come from, your circle of friends or business, okay? A great guy that, that introduced uh, Adam to, Dan, Dan uh, uh, Dan Nielsen owns Bishop McCann. That's I'm actually going to go work for him in, a, in about two weeks, helping him out with some stuff. He had a divider, ruined his company, financially bankrupt it, but he got back on, okay? And he's, I mean, multimillionaire, successful right now, okay? So you can see those coming. Sub subtractors sometimes are tough, but you'll end up seeing those with clarity. You had a question? No, you, there you go. She, Dr. Verna talks a lot about how you do that, okay? Sometimes they don't know, and... If you want to accelerate, you just you got you got to sometimes get away, and that's tough to do. But she shows you how to do that in, in her book. Okay. Yeah, three more questions, and then go ahead. Okay, if it's a loved one, you just need to sit down and talk. Hey, mom, dad, I I think you may not have the you may you may think you have the best interest, but I want to go this one. Sometimes they have wisdom we don't see. I'll just tell you. I told my dad I was gay a couple years ago, and he said, Yeah, I, I know. I said, no, you don't. And he goes, you've been living with the same guy for like four years. You think I'm dumb? <laughs> All right. He goes, I'm glad you could finally tell me, you know. I mean, that, that's kind of. So sometimes it, that's tough to do. Um, sometimes you just got to sit down and talk. Just talk. Hey, I think you're doing this, and this is the effect. Um, then, then, 
Yeah, okay, so like if they're an alcoholic, something like that, or... Okay, so you still love them, but maybe, maybe you don't talk to them every hour of the day, okay? Maybe, maybe you set time that's positive for you to talk and interact with that individual, okay? You may have to... You, baby Steps, there's a, a movie with Bill Murray to get some of your baby steps. You may have to back step a little bit, okay? That's okay. If they're a divider, you've got to get them out now. Just get them out because they're, they're, they're killing your life. Okay, three more, you, you, and then you. Yeah. So, so there, there's about um, 12 books. Um, this took about 50 hours to build all this, but this has been in my mind for a while, okay? So three other questions. Um, that's tough because if I had another hour, I would go into what's called neurological conditioning. And, and that's a totally different, but we can talk afterward. Adam knows about that. Uh, Tony Robbins, Awaken the Giants, probably, probably the closest one that, okay? So you condition yourself, your, your brain makes neurons, and you start to do this pattern over and over again, especially if, if pleasure is associated with, even if it's pseudo-pleasure. Your brain still wants to do that. Drugs, alcohol, bad stuff, okay? Yes? Okay, so um, drink two or three glasses of water before you go out. Tentatively, yeah, you don't really want to drink when you have a full stomach. That's one way. You remove yourself from less of those situations, or you just tell your friends, hey, I'm really concerned when I have two drinks, I have eight. So can you guys help monitor that? I've told them, they go, okay. You, yeah, you still go. I mean, we, we all went out last night. I had three beers. People bought me beers, and I was like, oh, I'll take it, but, you know. I drank about half and then set it down. No offense to anyone, but. Okay, last question. Uh, emotional separation at times. When, I mean, I had to tell people, engage. You have to kill that. You have to fire the trigger to kill that person. And that's tough to do because I, I know what's going to happen next. And it, it's, it's a job, and you just you have to accept that, okay? And that's tough because values are sometimes in competing demand, okay? I did not come out in the military because I think it would have embarrassed some people like the general officer I worked for or maybe others. Again, a limiting belief, maybe. Okay, so sometimes you, you do it and, and you live with that. I mean, I still, yeah, we can talk more about that later. I'm going to quit because I know that you're trying to get me off. Okay, so real quick, I'll show you what this looks like. Make a list of all the things that describe you. Circle the ones that, that the six top that describe you, and then, then put a square around the six that you, how you think other people look at you, how other people look at you. That's a self-identity and a global identity. When they're not aligned, when they're not in agreement, then you have to rebrand yourself. And it's how you think, speak, behave, do, decide. Think, speak, behave, do, decide. So everything you do, everything you do is branding yourself. Damon John wrote a book called The Brand Within. If you really, how, if you want others to see you a certain way, you better think, speak, behave, do, decide that way. That's how you brand yourself, okay? I'll, st I'll stick around later for questions. Um, back to you. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much.